Welcome again. Today we are going to cover a question of shielding that you may see on your AVR exam or possibly you're in your medical physics profession and you're taking a class and you may see this ugly equation. Often in part three, they very much can give you an equation and ask you about it. You probably wouldn't be required to write this down, I would hope not but it is important to know what it's used for and what some of these factors are. So simply, what is this equation? How is it used? Define the variables and how do you use it clinically? So first of all, the B can thankfully help us. It is a barrier transmission factor for scatter from the patient. So remember, we have barrier transmission factors for leakage and scatter, and this specifically is scatter. And as we break down some of these variables, we can see maybe that will help you remember this big nasty equation, mainly this F over 400 is the main way I did it. That if you saw 400, well, you know that's going to be the scatter transmission factor. So first foremost, uh, this alpha here, that is the scatter fraction. That also, if you remember this, that's going to pretty much tell you whether this is the scatter or leakage as well. Now, the scatter fraction is the ratio of the incident radiation on a scattering surface where in our case is the patient to that scattered at a certain angle for a 20 by 20 field size. So now the 20 by 20 field size, if obviously you multiply that out, you're going to get your 400. That's where that 400 comes from, because that is this field size we are assuming for this specific equation. And so this is going to differ based on the angle. And this is something that in the reports in the NCRPs you can look up. And that is how you're going to determine that factor. Often people have them in tables and you have equations that actually calculate this unless you're only looking for it for a one specific angle. But that is the scatter fraction. And so this F over 400, that is going to modify to your specific field size. So 20 by 20 is kind of like the, the largest there. And then you're going to modify it to your specific field size you are considering. So we've got our W and T, that's the same. This is still the workload. This is still the occupancy factor. So thankfully nothing new there, but now we have the D squared SCA and SEC. So the SCA here, that is going to be the distance from the scattering surface, hence the patient to the point to be protected. So that is what SCA is, and SEC is the distance from the target to the scattering surface. That always confused me a bit when I was studying because you, I don't want to confuse you. That is, that is what those stand for. So remember, here is from the surface to the, I guess, where we, the, the point of protection. I'm just going to say the wall. And then this is from the target to the surface. And that is a scattering surface. A P is permissible dose. A U is going to be a, equal to one because scatter and leakage are considered isotropic. So that is why you don't see a U here. Also something I suppose uh, important to note, good to know regardless, is that F is the beam size at the scattering surface. So not just the field size at the machine, but specifically the beam size at the scattering surface. So that covers all the variables. And I really think in part three, in my experience, they're not going to ask you to fill numbers in this equation and come out with a big number or anything like that, especially with the time limits they might pick out one or two of these to describe, but knowing what all the variables are or generally how it's used and what this is, to me is what is important. But study to the depth that you feel most comfortable with. There's just so much to study for part three, you can't know everything. So be sure you have a good broad knowledge and clinical understanding of it. And in some ways hope that that's good enough. So now how do we use this clinically? So we've got our B factor, our transmission factor for our head leakage. 
And then we also have it now for our scatter. So what we do here is we calc both these and then we use the two source rule. And that is going to give us our secondary barrier for our linear accelerator walls. So fairly basic question, uh, not a whole lot involved, but a lot to remember, a lot of variables to keep straight. But if you have any questions, comment below. Just have a brief understanding of what this equation is, what the variables are and how it's used. And I think you'll be all right. If you have any questions, comment below. Best of luck studying.